Uh, on the record in 2022, TR 2884, State of Kansas versus Kevin Wayne Hood. The state appears by and through Deputy Butler County Attorney Jared Regeer. Defendant Kevin Hood appears in person and pro se. We were here first on December 14th, 2022, at which time Mr. Hood pled not guilty and requested a bench trial on the one count of failing to yield at a stop or yield sign. So at this time, Mr. Hood, are you still wishing to have your trial? Yes, ma'am. And you're ready to proceed at this time? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Regeer, are you ready to proceed? I am, Your Honor. All right. At this time, are there any opening statements? The state waives opening argument. Mr. Hood, do you have any opening statements? I'm not sure. Uh, state, state my case or just opening no, statement? Just a statement as to what the evidence will show. Uh, no, ma'am. All right. Both parties waiving opening statements. Mr. Regeer, you may call your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the state calls Deputy Dathan Tyler Enns to the stand. Where are you employed? The Butler County Sheriff's Office. Uh, what is your professional title? The Sheriff's Deputy. And how long have you worked as an officer? About three and a half years. Three and a half years. Okay. Uh, were you on active duty in your professional capacity on September 2nd of 2022? at approximately 5.14 p.m. Deputy Enns, are you still yes, with Yes, I was. Okay. Um, at that date- Yes, I was. Okay. At that date and time, where were you at? I was parked on Southwest Butler Road, just south of 120th Street. Okay. Uh, is that in Butler County? Yes, it is, just south of the city of Andover. Okay. Um, now you already said that you were parked at the time. So, um, so were you moving or stopped in your vehicle at the time? I was stopped in my vehicle, sir. Okay. And what direction were you facing? I was facing southbound. Okay. Um, could you please um, paint a picture of your immediate surroundings? Any uh, buildings, trees, things of that nature? There's tree rows on both the east and west side of that intersection on the south side of 120th. Okay. There's a housing development on the north side of 120th, a median that runs down Butler Road. It's a two lane road that at that point where I was sitting is where it merges from two lanes to one lane to continue southbound out of town. Okay. Um, now you mentioned that housing development. Is it the sort of housing development where families might potentially live? Yes, it is, sir. Okay. Um, are there any other landmarks or unusual physical features about this area that you failed to mention earlier? Not that I can think of, sir. Okay. Now you mentioned that all this occurred at an intersection. Is this intersection at a paved road? It's not a, is it a dirt road like you might see in a country or a township? Yes, sir. It's yeah, on the you... east side of Butler Road, 120th is dirt. Okay. Can you hear me, Your Honor? You're, we're having a problem with your connection because your, your video seems frozen for the most part. Mr. Hood, are you, are you okay with the connection? I, yes, yes ma'am. Okay. I'm fine. All right. Please proceed, Mr. Regeer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so you mentioned at the intersection, it is a dirt road on one side. Is it paved elsewhere at the intersection? Yes, sir. All other sides are dirt, or all other sides are paved. Okay. Butler Road and 120th. Are there any stop signs near this intersection? There's a stop sign on the east and the west side of Butler Road on 120th. Okay, so two stop signs. Are both these standard stop signs that you might encounter um, just on day to day? Yes, they are, sir. Okay. So nothing unusual about these stop signs whatsoever? No, sir. Uh, what, 
Now, the, the ticket on this case would appear to um, refer to a dodge of some sort. Was, was there a, a stop sign on the road uh, near this particular vehicle? Yes, sir. The Dodge pickup came from the west side of that intersection. There's a stop sign on the west side of that intersection okay. that you uh, have to stop prior to turning on to Butler Road. Okay. Um, is there anything near this stop sign that might potentially hide it from view? Not if you're traveling eastbound. Okay. Um, and were you able to see this stop sign from where you were at the time of the incident? I can't see the sign. I don't believe. I think it's a little behind the trees. In order to make a proper stop at that stop sign, you have to proceed out to see both directions. The neighborhood on the north side of there has a fence around it, and there's a tree road that runs up to the south side. Okay. Uh, is this a sign is set a little bit behind? Okay. Is this an area that you are familiar with? Yes, I am, sir. Okay. So this is an area that you've patrolled in the past, presumably. Yes, sir. I frequently patrol that area. Okay. So you so it's safe to say then that you're familiar with the layout where stop signs are. And what is uh, and what is required at at different intersections? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. Um, are there any other road signs beyond the stop signs near this particular intersection? I believe there's street sign for Southwest One Twentieth and Butler Road. Probably a few signs indicating that they need to merge around the medians that are concrete medians in the middle of Butler Road and at that intersection, okay. possibly um, a stop ahead sign. I'm not sure other than that. Okay. Um, what was the weather like on the date and time in question? It was clear. Clear? As best I can remember. Okay. Um, was it dark outside at the time? No, sir, it was daylight. And did any of these aspects of location impair your field of vision in any way? No, they didn't, sir. Okay. Are you familiar with KSA 81528? Yes, I am. Okay. What does that uh, statute require drivers to do at stop signs? It requires if there is a stop line on the ground, they're required to stop behind that. Otherwise, they're required to proceed forward to where they can clearly see in both directions prior to proceeding into the intersection. Okay. And does the statute they require them to stop? past the stop sign and come to a stop. Okay. So, in any event, yes. the statute does require a, ve a vehicle to stop at a stop sign before entering an intersection. Yes, sir, it does. Okay. At this time, I would respectfully request the court take judicial notice of KSA 8 1528. Your Honor, forgive me. I believe you may be muted. I was for a moment, yes. Uh, so, notice is so taken, Mr. Regeer. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Are you uh, familiar with the uh, manual put out by the Kansas Department of Revenue to help people pass the written exam for a Kansas driver's license, otherwise known as the Kansas Driving Handbook? Yes, I am, sir. Okay. Um, at this time, I would uh, further request the court take judicial notice of the same, as well as leave of the court to read from page 18 um, from the section entitled Stopping. Page 18, Stopping? Yes, Your Honor. What uh, edition are you looking at, counsel? What year? If you have that handy. I do, Your Honor. I have the, um, the, the edition that includes a notation on the front page stating, quote, revised June of 2022. All right. Thank you. That will be noted as well. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, quoting from the section on page 18 entitled stopping, quote, a complete stop is required at a stop sign 
you must stop at a clearly marked stop line, but if none, before entering the crosswalk on the near side of the intersection, or if none, then at a point intersecting the intersecting roadway. And that is also, and it also includes a bolded notation um, referring to KSA 8, 1528. Actually, Mr. Regeer, they, they basically are the same quotation, aren't they? More, more or less, Your Honor. Um, but I believe that, but I believe this um, particular um, edition puts it in a more concise manner uh, meant for the, a, for an everyday civilian. Uh, Deputy, um, do you consider yourself vi capable of visually identifying when traffic violations have taken place? Yes, I do, sir. Okay. Uh, do you have any past experiences or special training which allows you to identify traffic violations? Yes, I do. Okay. And uh, could you please um, briefly describe all that in detail? From when you start your field training proceed, the field training program goes over all the traffic laws and how to conduct a stop based off of that being based off of your field training. But there's not a set standard for everything. We did not hear oh. your answer. You cut in and out so much. Do you want him to try to that uh, again, Mr. Regeer? I, I just don't know if this is going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, Deputy Enns, would you please um, repeat your um, response to the last question? Yes, sir. Um, we go through a 12 to 14 week field training program where we're trained by a field training officer within the department on everything to do with our job field that includes traffic stops, and traffic law. We also go to the Kansas Law Enforcement Training Center, KLETC in Yoder, Kansas. And that's another 13 week program where they continue to train us on traffic law and all constitutional law and state law and the procedures for a traffic stop and everything like that. In addition to that, I have at the beginning of this year, uh, approximately 2,500 traffic stops in my career and have worked probably 15 to 20 different step programs that are put on by the state. It's a special traffic enforcement program that is, uh, I go on duty with the sole purpose of conducting traffic stops and um, making people aware of the traffic laws and different things like that. Okay. Um, on um, September 2nd at, um, of 2022 at 514 p.m., did you observe any acts that you consider traffic violations? Yes, I did, sir. I observed a white Dodge pickup from the west side of that intersection uh, proceeding without coming to a complete stop after coming into a clear visual from where I was sitting. In order to come to a complete stop where you can clearly see both ways, you'd have to proceed past the tree line where I was sitting for the sole purpose of watching that stop sign. Okay. And um, they did not do so. They rolled through and continued on southbound towards Rose Hill. Okay. And where the and where the Dodge approached the intersection, it was right. He um, the road is right next to a stop sign. Yes, sir. The road that 120th approaching Butler Road, you're required to stop on 120th while you're still facing eastbound prior to turning either north or southbound onto Butler Road. Okay. Um, were and were there any passengers in the Dodge? Yes, there was. There was a female passenger. Uh, were you ever able to identify the um, the identity of the uh, Dodge's driver? Yes, I was. Okay. How were you able to do so? He provided me with a driver's license. Uh, do you see the driver of the Dodge present in this Zoom conference? Yes, sir, I do. Uh, Mr. Kevin Hood wearing a 
KU sweater or jacket? Um, Your Honor, let the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. The record so reflects. Uh, were you ever able to speak to the defendant? Yes, I was. Okay. Uh, when did this happen? When I conducted the stop and I approached his vehicle, informed him of why I stopped him and asked him to provide me with his information as far as driver's license proof insurance. Uh, so you never, so prior to the stop, you never had any opportunity to interact with the defendant? No, sir. I had never met the defendant to the best of my knowledge prior to the stop. All right. Um, when you did speak to the defendant after the stop, what did the defendant say? I don't remember if he said he did or didn't roll through the stop sign. Um, I remember asking him for his information and he was a very polite throughout the entire interaction. Um, I remember talking to him a little bit about him being a Broncos fan uh, and his uh, girlfriend in the passenger seat or wife was wearing Chiefs clothes, but it was very, very, uh, very laid back conversation. I advised him, I stopped him for that. He was very cooperative, just provided me the information and I proceeded with my, what I was supposed to do. Okay. Um, did, did you ever uh, write the, the defendant a citation for failing to stop at a stop sign? Yes, I did. Um, how did um, the defendant respond when you wrote them the citation? I provided him with the information on the citation and where to contact the court. And I guess to the best of my recollection, he took his citation and I told him to drive safe and they continued on their way. Uh, barring any it was very polite throughout the whole interaction. So. Okay. so throughout the entire interaction, it was a very uh, civil conversation, if I'm understanding correctly. Yes, it was, sir. Uh, barring any redirect, no further questions. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Hood, this is your opportunity to cross-examine the witness that is question him about anything he's testified to. It's not yet that portion of the trial where you'll testify if you want to, but if you have questions of the officer, this would be the time to ask them. Yes, ma'am. I do have one question of, of Officer Entz. Um, Please ask him. Yes, ma'am. You, you had stated earlier that you were facing south and you were approximately 100, 150 feet away from the intersection. If you were facing south towards Rose Hill, how did you see me not come to a stop at the intersection, which was north of you. I had positioned myself where I could watch that particular stop sign through my side and rear view mirrors on my vehicle due to that being a stop sign that has uh, constant issues. Okay, I have nothing further at this time. All right, any further, Mr. Regeer? Uh, nothing further from the state, Your Honor. Very well. Do you have any other witnesses? Uh, no other witnesses, Your Honor. So the state rests? The state rests, Your Honor. Mr. Hood, that means they put all the witnesses on they're going to. Would you like to put any witness evidence in? Yes, ma'am. I, I guess my question is, did the court receive my photos? I did. Okay. All right, so you're going to call yourself as a witness? Yes, ma'am. Please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Go ahead and tell us what you want the court to consider, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I was heading east on Pawnee Road, approaching Andover Road, and I did come to a stop sign. I believe I did stop at the stop sign and there is also a stop line. I stopped well behind both of those. After I, I looked left, I could see clearly left. I could not see right. After I came to a complete stop, I did proceed slowly forward until I could see to the right of the tree row. Once I saw that, I was, it was clear. I, can, I proceeded to turn right on, that, uh, on Andover Road. I came to a complete stop. I, I, I did 
edge forward after I came to a complete stop before I turned, but it was also very, very slow and cautiously. Uh, uh, Officer Entz pulled me over, said that he uh, observed me not stopping at the stop sign. And if, as you can see clearly on the photos that I sent you, the stop sign is 10, 15 feet back from the intersection. And it's from where Officer Entz was sitting, impossible for him to see whether I stopped at the stop sign or the stop line. Let's hold up a minute on those photos. Ashley, do you have those where you can screen share them by chance? I think they're in the file. While we're waiting, I, I would just like to add that uh, Officer Entz was also very polite. He did say that he stopped me for not, for not stopping at a stop sign. And I did at that time inform him that I did stop. I believe that I did stop once he said, once he said a second time that he observed me not stopping, I wasn't going to argue with him. So I just, at that point, I said, okay. I can screen share them if I need to. Okay. Do you, Missy, are you prepared to do that now? Oh, okay. It looks like Ashley. Oh, I think I have. Do you guys see them? Yes. Very well. Okay. All right. So Mr. Hood, we now have your photos available. A series of five photos. It looks like it's a white truck parked at a stop sign. You want to go ahead and tell us why you have these pictures here. When, I mean, you've told us a little bit but on a picture by picture basis. If you want to go ahead. Sorry, I had muted myself. Uh, yes, on this first photo here, uh, I just shot a straight in shot where I could see at the end of the median is where the two officers were sitting. And that's where I circled my wife's car. Uh, and that my, my white truck is where the stop sign and the stop line are. It, it is impossible to see from where, where my wife's car is to see if a vehicle stops at that stop sign or that stop line. What is, is, is the black car your wife's car or is no, no. the black car is a, just another vehicle at the corner. My so wife's car is the, in the circle. Is it, a, is it moving or you're saying it's, no, sitting? it's sitting, it's sitting there as, as the officer's vehicle was. Okay. I'm trying to click on the second picture. I don't, I'm not sure. You may need the clerk to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then this is just a, a closer up of the where the officer's vehicle is setting, but you cannot see the stop sign in that in that photo. But just to give you a better idea of how far he was uh, south of the intersection. Okay. Now, are these pictures supposed to reflect where your truck was sitting when you stopped at the stop sign? This is exactly where I was stopped sitting when I stopped at the stop sign. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead, please. Yeah, this is just another view. Again, you can't see where the officer was sitting here, but just the how big and how the, the trees are blocking the intersection, well back from the intersection. So I just basically, again, I was just getting multiple multiple views of the of the stop sign and the intersection. Now, is that your wife's car there, or is that just another car coming down the road? Another vehicle coming. Yeah, you cannot see, from this angle, you cannot see where the officer was sitting. Okay. All right, is that the last one? I believe so. Yes, that was the fifth photo. All right, any other testimony that you want to make? Uh, other, only other than, again, I, I told Officer Entz that I believed I stopped the stop sign, uh, and then I proceeded uh, carefully and cautiously, uh, and then as as my wife believed I did too. And then as the day proceeded, I kept going, I know I stopped at that stop sign. So we decided to go back to the intersection and saw that, that basically where he was sitting, it was it'd be impossible for him to see it. So I decided I was going to take photos and contest it, ma'am. That I have nothing further. All right, cross-examination, Mr. Regeer. No, nothing further from the state, your honor. All right, Mr. Hood, any further evidence? No, ma'am. All right, Mr. Regeer, any rebuttal evidence? Uh, no rebuttal evidence, Your Honor. 
Very well. Both parties have rested. Are there any closing arguments? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, please proceed. Uh, Your Honor, this is a textbook example of what not to do. Uh, pursuant to KSA 8, 1528, subsection B, quote, except when directed to proceed by a police officer, every driver of a vehicle approaching a stop sign shall stop at a clearly marked stop line, but if none, before entering the crosswalk of the, on the nearest side of the intersection, or if none, then at the point nearest the intersecting roadway where the driver has a view of approaching traffic on the intersecting roadway before entering it. The officer has testified that he never spoke to the defendant before the stop, that the, he, that the officer routinely patrols this area, um, as well as the fact that there was a passenger in this vehicle. The defendant was driving the Dodge, the defendant approached the stop sign, while he, may have, while he may have stopped at the stop sign itself, the fact remains is that by the witness, by the, by the defendant's own exhibits, this is a road that has some trees in view. The, he, while, while he may claim that Officer Enns did not have, a, a, have his vehicle in view when he stopped at the stop sign, there is the flip side that while he, while while there may have been trees in view, the defendant could not have seen any um any incoming traffic, and the statute specifically refers to um or quote or if none, then at a point nearest the intersecting roadway where the driver has a view of approaching traffic on the intersecting roadway before entering it. The defendant was driving the Dodge. Again, he failed to. He failed to comply with the letter of the law at this intersection of 120th Street and Butler Road. Um, it, and, and, and as a driver of a vehicle, he is expected to obey the rules of the road. Here, the defendant clearly failed to do so, and he must be held accountable for his actions. Mr. Regeer, this is pretty much the same or very similar to one we had last week. Uh, I don't recall if it did or did not have a stop line, but is, is this a stop line I'm looking at here in this photograph, that white line running through there? It would appear there, it appeared there is one, Your Honor, but again, this is a situation where the, it, it's not merely a matter of observing a, a line, it's also being mindful of incoming traffic. All right, uh, Mr. Hood, any closing argument? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Regeer said several times that uh, in lieu of a stop sign or a stop line, then you uh, must stop at a clear area. There is obviously a stop sign and a stop line, which I did stop at and then I did proceed cautiously. I did keep traffic in mind as I proceeded to the cross, as, as I proceeded to the intersection. That is all, ma'am. Thank you. Well, the violation is alleged 8-1528, stop signs and yield signs, duties of drivers, preferential right of way, may be indicated by stop signs or yield signs as authorized in KSA 8-2008 and amendments thereto. And the uh, 2008 statute addresses erection and maintenance of stop signs, yield signs and traffic control devices, citing that the Secretary of Transportation with reference to state highways and local authorities with reference to highways under their jurisdiction may erect and maintain stop signs, yield signs, or other official traffic control devices to designate through highways or to des designate intersections or other roadway junctions at which vehicular traffic on one or more of the roadways shall yield or stop and yield before entering the intersection of the junction. So that's the uh, 
cross reference to that 8 2008. So, preferential right of way may be indicated by stop sign or yield signs as authorized by 2008. And then it goes on to say in section B, except when directed to proceed by a traffic police officer. Well, we didn't have an officer out there directing traffic, so that doesn't apply. But except for an officer's directing, except when directed to proceed by a police officer, every driver of a vehicle approaching a stop sign shall stop at a clearly marked stop line. Now, if I am to accept the defendant's testimony and his exhibits, he is clearly stopped behind the line Then these photographs, which he tells me are representative of where he stopped the day of September 2nd, 2022. Statute goes on to say, but if not, then before entering the crosswalk, or if none, meaning if no crosswalk, then at the point nearest the intersecting roadway, where the driver has a view of appro approaching traffic on their intersecting roadway before entering it. After having stopped, the driver shall yield the right of way to any vehicle in the intersection or approaching on another roadway so close he has to constitute an immediate hazard during the time when such driver is moving across or within the intersection or junction of the roadways the driver shall yield the right of way to pedestrians. Well, pedestrians don't apply to this case. The difficulty for the court in this particular case is you do have a stop line. And the defendant's argument is, I stop behind the stop line, therefore I, yield, I didn't uh, violate the statute. I, I yielded at the stop sign. But as I understand Mr. Regeer's argument, we have two points here. We have a stop line for the defendant to stop behind, but we also have this row of trees and the stop line is behind the row of trees. There's no stop line out in front of the row of trees to uh, protect the, the motorists coming and going on these roadways. Therefore, that provision in order to provide the safety that is intended by this stop sign the driver would have to follow that part of the statute that says you are to stop at the point nearest the intersecting roadway where the driver has a view of approaching traffic. That would have to be out there just a little bit past that tree, but not into the roadway. Otherwise, you would not be able to see approaching traffic. And if you didn't stop at that point, you could uh, run right into oncoming traffic. Defendant said, well, I kind of rolled out there to make sure I was safe and then proceeded. He admits he didn't stop at that portion of the roadway beyond the tree so that he could see if the traffic was clear, but rather he rolled through it. So I'm just struggling that I have two, two different parts of the statute that looks like it lends itself to this situation. One, the uh, he parked behind the stop sign, but he didn't yield or stop out there where it's safe at the trees to make sure nobody was coming. Yeah. I, think, I, think, I think I heard very conflicting testimony though as to what the officer could see. The officer testified that regardless of which way the truck was parked, it didn't stop. In other words, the officer said, basically contradicted the defendant's testimony. Defendant says, I stopped behind the stop sign and slowly and cautiously approached the highway. But that's not what the officer testified to. He said he was parked where he could see the stop sign from his mirrors. 
that would have put him in a different location than what Mr. Hood said the officer was in, because if the officer was parked where Mr. Hood said he was, I don't think the officer could have seen behind the trees. And I don't think he could have known whether or not Mr. Hood stopped behind the stop line. If he was parked where Mr. Hood said he was, he should have been able to tell if he stopped at the point nearest the intersection to make sure the traffic was clear. But the bottom line that helps this court make its decision is that the officer did testify that he was sitting where he could see the stop sign and that the defendant did not stop at the stop sign or at the tree line. So I think that regardless of which part of the statute one applies, to these facts, if one is to believe the officer's testimony, he could see the stop sign and therefore the defendant did not stop. And I do find that the defendant's testimony, or I'm sorry, that the officer's testimony is credible and I am convinced uh, beyond a reasonable doubt that the officer did see what he thought he saw, what he said he saw under oath and that the defendant did not stop. Uh, I'm not saying that the defendant is not being truthful because the defendant frankly wasn't sure if he stopped or not. And he and his wife talked about, well, I, I'm pretty sure I stopped. I, I know I stopped at that, but the very fact that he's having to, to work it through his mind and go back and look at it to help him decide if he stopped, so, suggest to this court that he wasn't clear in his own mind that he stopped. He had to go back and convince himself he stopped, whereas the officer from the very beginning was adamant that he could see the stop sign and that the defendant didn't stop and that that's why he gave him the ticket. And the officer went on to testify that this is a, a stop sign, a traffic area with significant problems and that his he or his department watches it closely. So at this time, I am going to find the defendant guilty. Of course, this decision is appealable. You have up to 14 days, Mr. Hood, to appeal to the uh, Kansas Court of Appeals if you wish to appeal. The fine is $75. Court costs are 108 for a total of $183. If you want to pay that today, you can. If you need some time, I can give that to you. Do you need some time, Mr. Hood? Ma'am, I would like to appeal. All right, if you want to appeal, you'll have the duty of doing that. You're going to have to post an appeal bond. I'm going to make that uh, a $200 appeal bond to cover the cost of the fine and the Well, I'll make it $183. $183, the cost of the ticket and the uh, court costs. You'll have to pay those when you file your appeal as bond in this case, appeal bond. But you have 14 days to perfect that appeal, sir. It's not just enough to file the notice. You have to perfect the appeal. What does that mean, Your Honor? Well, that... That means you have to proceed with your appeal and actually file the appeal, not just the notice that you intend to. Yes, ma'am. And you'll need to appeal that or file that bond, like I said, at the time you file your notice. Okay, anything further at this time? Who do I contact and how do I go about appealing, ma'am? Well, I, I can't give you a lot of legal advice. You have to... If you're going to represent yourself in the appeal, you'll right. have to make yourself familiar with the appeal process and procedures. Will the do. notice of appeal is filed with the clerk of the district court. But again, you it's not enough just to file a notice. You have to follow through with it, uh, with all the procedures that that will entail. Yes, ma'am. Going to do that on your own, you need to, again, know how to do that. Yes, ma'am. 
All right, if there's nothing further, we will be in recess on the Hood matter. You may go, Mr. Hood. You may go, Deputy Ants. Yes, who, who was that? Ma'am, this is Deputy Ants. Um, yes, Deputy Ants. If I could clarify, I was actually at that intersection today due to the statute being a failure to yield at the stop sign. Every time that I stop somebody at that intersection, that I did twice today, you, I tell them you failed to yield properly yield at the stop sign because if they didn't stop once they get past the trees and they could see in both directions, it was an improper. So I'm not, I agree with Mr. Hood from that point, I can't see the stop line in the sign and I must have misspoke with, it, with you today if that's what you believe, but I can see where he needs to stop prior to proceeding. Does that make sense, ma'am? So are you asking me to reconsider and open the case for new evidence? I I just wanted to clarify my position on it because I didn't I didn't believe that I said I that I pro may probably spoke it that way due to the fact that it is the it is the not stopping at a stop sign statute and the statute reads if you can't clearly see in both as you guys have already quoted. So the proper area to stop that you were discussing would be where he can properly see traffic in both directions. When I can, I can see that he can see in both directions based off of where I was sitting, where he, his wife's car was circled in the picture. Is that where you were sitting, Deputy Ants? That is where I was sitting, ma'am. So you couldn't have seen the stop. I can see the stop sign. And but it's a failure the... to stop at the stop sign citation for not stopping where you can clearly see both directions prior to proceeding. Okay, so you couldn't see the stop sign, you couldn't see the stop line, you don't, you can't, you cannot swear that he did not stop the sign behind the stop sign or the stop line, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, all I can do is swear that Per the last section of the statute that you talked about, where he said, where it says you have to stop where you can properly see it, any kind of traffic. Okay. I can know that there was no stop when all I see is the nose of a vehicle come past the trees and never, never come to a complete stop. All right. So uh, the statute says stop behind the stop line, the stop line, if there is no stop line. Deputy Rear, Regeer, you agree, agree that's what it says? Um, that would appear to comport with a plain reading of the statute, Your Honor. And there was clearly a stop line in this case, correct? Assuming the court is accepting the defendant's pictures, uh, there does appear to be one uh, a few feet um, roughly in front of the stop line, notwithstanding the tree line. Okay, but I didn't hear anybody object to those photographs, so they were considered admitted. So you have to stop behind the stop line. It's only if there isn't a stop line that you have to stop behind the crosswalk, right? Do you agree with that interpretation of the statute? 8-1528B, Mr. The, the word of the statute is, or if none, um, but for the fact that the, um, the statute does not appear to account for other hazards that might potentially be in place, as is clearly the case um, in these photos. Well, it does take into consideration intersections where the driver doesn't have a view of approaching traffic on the intersecting roadway before entering it. It addresses that, doesn't it? It does, but it does, but it is preceded by language that says, or if none, um, with respect to the uh, clearly marked stop line or the crosswalk in the same statute. Well, let's just read it word for word, except when directed to proceed by a police officer. Every driver of a vehicle approaching a stop sign shall stop at a clearly marked stop line. 
But if not, meaning, but if there's no stop line, then he has to stop, quote, before entering the crosswalk on the near side of the intersection. Or if none, end quote, and, and inserting, um, so if, if there's a stop line, stop line, he has to stop behind it. If there's not a stop line, he has to stop behind the crosswalk. If and only if there's neither one of those two, quote, then at that point nearest the intersecting roadway. where the driver has a view of approaching traffic on the intersecting roadway before entering it. So isn't that saying that that third portion, then at the point nearest the intersecting roadway, come into play only if he doesn't have a stop line and only if he doesn't have a crosswalk, Mr. Regeer? Uh, that would appear to be the plain reading of the statute. Uh, never, at, at least insofar as the final point regarding um, where the driver has a view of approaching traffic. But nevertheless, uh, by the defendant's own pictures, uh, there is the matter of the trees that are already in place, um, which, which, which by the defendant's own allegations would impede a view of incoming traffic. Now, I don't think he's actually as much, I'm not sure if you're actually arguing he didn't stop or he didn't yield. Um, but yielding doesn't really come into play because there wasn't anybody to come, come down the road to yield for. Uh, the next sentence says, after having stopped, which the defendant claims he did, and the deputy says he can't tell whether, now he tells me, that he can't tell whether the defendant stopped or not, that the defendant very well may have, as he said, stopped behind the stop sign or behind the stop line. So after having stopped, then the driver shall yield the right of way to any vehicle in the intersecting or approaching on another roadway so close as constitute an immediate hazard during the time when such driver is moving across or within the intersection or junction of the roadways. So if he had stopped, he still had the duty to pull up cautiously and make sure he yielded for anyone coming. And if he, if he had stopped behind the stop sign and didn't yield and plowed into somebody, he clearly would be guilty of the violation of statute. I think we all would agree with that. But did he have a duty to stop a second time? That's the question. If no one was coming, did he have a duty to stop again after the hedge row? Because Mr. Regeer, your case that you can't prove, and your officers told me this, you can't prove that he didn't stop at the stop sign or the yield sign. So the question becomes, did he have a duty to stop a second time at the hedgerow if nobody was coming? What do you think about that, Mr. Regeer? And I'm not trying to stump you. I just, I, just my interpretation of the statute is troubling to me that Oh. Your Honor, like I stated, I did stop and then I did proceed cautiously. I heard you. I heard you, Mr. Hood. I, 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 I got it, Mr. Hood. That I, I understand. I think I, I think I've got it exactly what you said. Said you've yes, made your case very clear, and I and I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. But but the but now that the officer has told me he couldn't see whether you stopped at the stop sign or the intersection. I feel like I'm going to have to reverse my opinion because I don't read the statute to say that you have to stop and yield to somebody that's not there. Now, I've always operated under the same belief personally as a driver that Deputy Entz and Mr. Regeer is pointing out. I do remember my driver's ed teacher saying, you have to park behind the stop sign. 
but I also remember that you have to slowly and cautiously pull out and yield to anybody coming. But what it sounds like the argument from the state is he had a duty to stop again a second time at the roadway, even though no one was coming. So if I'm missing something here, Mr. Gear, I, I welcome your argument. But just reading over this statute, it just looks to me like the state is making an argument for a second stop that isn't anticipated in the statute. So I will definitely be studying this more because as Deputy Entz said, we've got a couple of those roadways that seem to get more attention than others and probably because they're more dangerous and probably because they, the stop sign is in the wrong spot maybe. Maybe that stop sign or that stop line needs to be moved out. I think there lies our issue, but the stop sign and stop line, or stop sign and stop line aren't helpful where they're located. I mean, looking at these pictures, stopping behind that stop sign, literally behind the sign of the, or the stop line makes no, no useful purpose. You need to be up there where you can see what's happening. So maybe that sign needs to be moved out there with the hedge more with the tree line. But as you may recall, I hinged my decision on the officer being able to see he didn't stop. And I appreciate the integrity of the officer and the candor of the officer uh, to make sure that the court didn't misunderstand his evidence. I, I applaud the officer for being so conscientious and credible. So, all right, if there's nothing further, I reverse my decision and find the defendant not guilty. And therefore I take away the order to pay the fines and costs. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, you're excused, Mr. Hood, Mr. Deputy Anson, again, thank you. And the state can appeal it. The state's got up to 14 days to appeal it too. And I, I would not be offended if you did because this is a very important issue. Um, some people might see it as a small issue, but it's a huge issue. Lives are at stake on that roadway. So I, I thank the officer and the county attorney for taking it seriously and taking the time on it. And, and uh, I'm sure we'll visit again. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Honor.